All right, what's up, Locker Nuts? We're at the post office. I've got my virus protection on, and we got this box of mail right here. This is orders for eBay and a few auction items to get out. So here I go to brave the dangers of the world. All right, stop number two. See right there, FedEx. FedEx for another package. Kind of hard with the beard. All right, I'm ready. All right, what's up, Locker Nuts? Yeah, going out in public is a little different uh, recently, isn't it? And I haven't been getting a lot of footage of when I do. That was just like the only footage I've gotten because it's like when you glove up and you got the bandana on your face and I get my glasses and they're getting fogged up. All of that makes it difficult enough, let alone having to work a camera on the phone, you know, with the gloves and everything. It just makes everything so much harder. So anyways, um, but yeah, we I, I don't go out very often. Uh, but when we do, especially recently, definitely putting the handkerchief on or a mask and uh, often gloving up or using hand sanitizer right, right when I get back in the car. But I'll tell you what, tonight we've got our big auction, Wednesday night auction. I went over to my personal storage locker. I didn't get any footage, but I will get some footage for you guys just if you're curious what we store in our own personal locker. We're going to be moving everything out of there very soon because it's costing us too much money. Uh, but I grabbed one bin in particular and I peeked in there, and you know what? I had a little bit of a throwback. That yeah, was fun. I haven't looked in that bin in, I don't know, maybe peeked in there 10 years ago. But I haven't really, really gone through that stuff in probably 20 years. So I thought you might have some fun going through some of my childhood stuff. But most importantly, we're going to get some of those comics out so we can auction them off tonight. Let's take a look at what I got. All right, as I said, this bin right here, pretty big bin, pretty heavy, came out of my personal locker. All this stuff came out of my personal locker. I grabbed the whole bin, brought it home. Uh, I've got a cash box here. I'll tell you the significance on that for, in a second. But just to give you a little look-see, here's what we got. And uh, I don't even remember putting some of this stuff in here. This is going to be fun. First up, we've got this little cash box. Now, normally, ooh, we love finding cash boxes, don't we? This one's a little different. It's not much cash in here. This one, and I'll tell you what, the key, and it does work. All right, really the only purpose of that is to make sure we don't lose it. And to secure it so we'll carry it by the handle and drop it. So I'll tell you what, my parents started a flea market business when I was 10 years old. And uh, my mom and my sister and me, sometimes my dad would go to the flea market and sell towels. That's what we sold. And there's 1983 half dollar. This was the cash box that we that I used. So when I turned 15, I said, hey, I don't want to work for you guys anymore. I want to start my own business. And they were really supportive and helped me branch off and do that. And by doing that, I, what that means I bought a trailer and my dad would drive my trailer out there and disconnect and go home and watch some football while I sold out there on Sunday and Saturdays. This is the cash box we used. Um, of course, when I got my driver's license, I didn't need that anymore. I bought a van and employed a couple of buddies. A couple old pennies there. No big deals. This, ooh. I wonder if we could see in here. We'll take a look at these in a second some old pictures the guys used to walk around the flea market take pictures of you you pay them and then they come back i think later that day or the next week and they give you these with the picture they took such a great service i don't remember what's on this cassette could very well be that this is one of the music cassettes that i played in the van on the way to the market it's another 50 cent piece 1776 to 1976 so here's some 
these are some old money belts that my mom, I think my mom sewed these up. And uh, these saw a lot of use, a lot of use. We'd have ones, fives, tens, twenties. I don't remember why we didn't just put everything in a wad, but this way we did it. There's another one right here. The two money belts. Right, basically, I bring an employee with me and grab a belt, tie it up. Let's get let's get selling. There's a I don't even know why this dollar's floating around in there. It's just a dollar. Rolls for coins. We used to roll them up sometimes before we went to the bank. This is back in the 80s, you guys. A couple more tapes. I don't remember what's in there. Sales book. Look at this. 1987. This is for like when people wanted a receipt. Three towels, ten bucks. Tax, seventy cents. Ten dollars and seventy cents. There's another one. <laughs> And then at the end of the day, and we're counting the money, we use this stuff. Ooh, that's a little dry. It didn't look like that last I opened this. But it's still got the same little feel to it. You do that, it's just like licking your fingers, but it gives it basically moistens your fingers so you can count the cash easier. I don't know why I keep this. I think I just keep it because it. when I open this thing, I just feel like I'm back in the flea market 30 years ago. All right, here's a little sketchbook that I kept. I don't know why. Some little drawings. I was quite the artist when I was young, but I'll tell you what, guys, if you're looking at this thing, whoa, those are amazing. That's amazing. I really wasn't that good of an artist. This is one of my favorite pieces right here. I really wasn't that good of an artist. What I was good at is copying people. So these were um, mostly all illustrations done in comic books. You may recognize this from an X-Men comic. That's Sauron, I think, in a storm. And... Uh, I think these two guys are from Alpha Flight, I forget. Uh, John Byrne was the original artist, and I basically just look at the comic and recreate it without tracing or anything. I wasn't really that good of an illustrator. I was just good at mimicking, but uh, definitely kept me busy when I was young. All right, another little cash box. Nothing in it. And I don't know why I kept this. This is I'm going to just sell, but um, this is something I had when I was young. Oh, look at this, you guys. A harmonica. Honer, just like the ones that we recently found. I never, oh, there's some money in there. Huh, how about that? Um, this is just like the ones we found just recently. I never really, really learned how to play it, but it's fun to mess around with it. This is all foreign money. Look. France, look at that. Maybe I'll put that in my foreign currency bin. And we'll sell it next time that little thing gets full. Foreign currency. I don't even remember where it came from. I really don't. Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Great book. I think my dad gave it to me. Oh, these are cool. These are for Porsches. This is my grandpa gave me. These are very old. I'm going to see if those are worth anything. I might have to let those go. Oh my goodness. Look at this. I do not remember having this stuff still. I loved Godzilla when I was a kid. Jackie Chestnut. That was my name when I was a kid. And look at this. Oh, yeah. My dad used to ch travel to Hong Kong quite a bit. And brought back a lot of Godzilla stuff back then. And we're talking in the 70s here. Look at that. Godzilla and King Kong. So ridiculous. <laughs> totally looks like bad suits. But you know what? As a kid, this was fantastic. All right, I want to get one. My favorite place. Oh, look at this. Some stuff from my childhood. 1986, kid, 16 years old. Not exactly a little kid, but... <laughs> Pretty funny. There's my buddy Scott right there. Look at that. <laughs> One of my best friends growing up. Yeah, this is a bunch of schoolwork that apparently I kept. The threat from computers. From Mr. Betancourt's class. 1985, guys. I was 14 at that time. Make some logos for a biz... For a a company star video i didn't remember that i do now but i don't remember yeah century expanded these are all logos this i don't remember doing that <laughs> you can kind of see why i got into graphic design because it's right up my alley look at all this stuff it's cool oh <laughs> look at this happy 80s family right there my goodness look at me i actually look skinny right there my mom and dad my sister <laughs> Debbie's gonna hate that I'm putting these on here. Oh, this is my friend Tim. Jason. Cut my good friend. <laughs> Alright, there is a picture of 
of marlin that my dad and I caught. It looks probably fake because whoever catches fish that big, but I'll tell you who catches fish back that big. Two guys that have never been marlin fishing before, had no clue what we were doing. <laughs> Went out for the first time in Cabo San Lucas and caught this monster. But this is uh, the first and last time I went fishing because why would we ever, ever go fishing again? All right, guys, maybe this is like really boring for you. I don't know, but it's fun for me. There's my friend Bill in his XR4Ti. A couple of our buddies. Oh, toilet papering. Look at that. Toilet papering a girl's house who would later become his wife. Jennifer, his wife today. So funny. 88. That's my senior year in high school right there. Look at that. I look like a baby. There's my junior high picture. Oh, I gotta go show my kids. They're gonna crack up. There's my 1985 season pass to Great America, which is amusement park. And there's my senior picture. Okay. We'll take a look at this in a second. It's a little closer right here, but look at that. Comics. We'll look at that in just a sec. All right, here we got an old, old compass. Oh my goodness. What is what is in here? This I think my grandpa gave me. Brass compass. Liquid field engineer compass. I think he gave it to me. I wonder if it's worth something with the instruction book and the original box. Uh, here's a rock. I don't know why I have it, but here's an old pin. I don't even know where this pin came from. Is this a pin? What is this? All right, what is this thing? K24. It'd be great if it meant 24 karat. Um, I don't know what this is or what it's for. Do you guys know what this is? I don't even remember where I got it. There's an old stamp. I really don't even know why I hold on to this stuff, you guys. Nixon Penny. That's pretty funny. A little novelty. I don't know why I have this stuff, really. Guitar pick. I never even played guitar. There's a photo of me in accounting class, I believe. Senior year. Ronald Reagan. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, it's a postcard. Oh, neat. It's a postcard from my friend Bill. You see his nickname for me there? Stinky. Boom! Say, so who the heck leaves money in their in their locker? Well, I guess I do. All right, what is this? It's got sand on. Is that a real authentic United States note? Both spendable and bankable. Card from when I was 13 years old. I joined a gym. Can you believe that? I would go to a gym by myself looking like that lifting weights and playing racquetball and then my friend joined luckily and he would come we play racquetball for hours another one of these porsche emblems here i have a feeling this might be worth some dough right here a couple of baseball gloves here mitts um which i probably played with when i was in junior high no joke yeah. all right let's get to these comics i know a lot of you are looking forward to seeing what i've got in there but first, I want to do a quick shout out to Faye Adams. Faye Adams is one of our longtime subscribers and supporters. And she also signed up for our memberships. One of the first to sign up for the memberships. And she is bonafide nuts. So if you guys aren't familiar with what we do with memberships, it's something new. And uh, for the bonafide nuts tier, you get a custom shout out just like we are here. So thanks, Faye, for signing up. It's awesome. And uh, for everyone else that signed up for the bonafide nuts, we... Keep watching our videos. You'll see your shout out coming up. And if you want to know how you can become a member, hit the join button down there. It's next to the subscribe button and it'll give you all the information about the two different tiers and uh, what kind of benefits come with it. All right, let's take a look at this. These are, I used to have a huge comic book collection when I was a kid. And these are basically the only comics, oh, that I ever kept. Wait a second. I didn't know I had the Max. This later this this came out later and these were some of my favorite books right here the max great books i did not know that i still had these it's funny because i've seen these come up on someone else's auction i forget what they went for decent money i was tempted to bid on it i just thought that i didn't have it anymore this is a great comic great storyline very intense artwork is beautiful oh, look at that we got two number ones two of them all right yeah, okay, well, there we go. Let's start up with the Max. That's what we got. Most of these are going to be the X-Men, all right? Because that's what I was reading back then. That was my favorite. Wolverine was my favorite. Huh. Wolverine. I didn't know I had these Wolverines either. 
Wolverines. I don't know. Huh. A lot of Wolverines. Oh, there's some Uncanny X-Men. Okay. Well, originally, I had Wolverine starting with number one. Okay. Uh, now, now we're talking about some good stuff here. 143. This, so this is illustrated by John Byrne, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's this Terry Austin here. Um, this is from 1980. Oh, now this is a later one. What may have happened here, guys, is I may have come across some books later on and just put them in, added it to my collection, these later ones. But this is this is my collection here that I was most excited about. Oh, look at this. Venom number one. I think we recently had these as well. Probably stuck those in there more recently, too. X-Men 159. Huh. All right, well, let's get to the good stuff here. This is my oldest X-Men book here, number 95. It was 30 bucks in the 80s. That's when I would have collected these. Basically, I worked for my parents at the flea market. Half the money that I made, they said, you can spend on whatever you want. For me, that was comics. <laughs> the other half they made me put in the bank. So 95, uh, this was a um, pretty good issue. 94 was the most coveted issue at the time. Because that's when the new cast had come into this title. I never got that book. I would never spend the money for it. I was always hoping to find a deal on it somewhere. And I never did. 94. So that we got 95. Here we got 96. And I believe we should have a whole series here. 98. 99. 100. Great one. 101. Oh, this is the Dark Phoenix. Well, the Phoenix. The Dark Phoenix came a little bit later. That's another one I think of the same. I just found one with no cover on it, so I kept it. Uh, there's number 102. Oh, yeah, with the Juggernaut. Mm-hmm. 103. This is great stuff. 104. I haven't seen these in years. 105. Fire Lord. 106. 107. 8. 9. That's the guy from Alpha Flight. Oh, he's called Wep Weapon Alpha. I think that was the start of Wep Alpha Flight. There's 110. Of 111, 113, looks like I'm missing 112, 114, 15, Enter Sauron. Look at the artwork on this, okay? At the time, this was, to me, the best around. This is John Byrne. It's just amazing artwork. He had just a way of... I just loved his style. I tried to copy it. Uh, 119, 120, definitely off of flight. All right, 121, 122, 3... Four, five. Oh, there's the Dark Phoenix, I think. Six, seven, eight, twenty-nine, one thirty. Dazzler, thirty-one, one thirty-two. Hellfire Club. That's White Queen. That's good. Some of that made it made it to the movies. That storyline. One thirty-three, one thirty-four. Um. This one, I think, was the one that was kind of co kind of controversial at the time they're talking about it when you go in the comic book store because they never showed people get killed back then. And then in one issue, Wolverine basically goes down the sewers with these guys and doesn't come out, and it's definitely implied that he killed everybody. Uh, that was a big deal. Defeated by Dark Phoenix. Great, great cover, great storyline. 136. Just the plastic that's sticking a little bit. 137, another great cover. 138, 139, 140, there's the Wendigo. That was a great character, too. Great villain. Great cover. 141, oh, yeah, this is getting some good stuff. 142, this starts dealing with alternate timelines, I think, if I remember correctly. 143, oh, 144, I didn't remember the man thing being in X Men. There he is, though. I mean, being in the X-Men comics. Is that Doctor Doom? Got lots of crossovers here. 46. 47. 48. 49. Artwork's getting a little weak here, I think. All right. Well, now I start seeing a bunch of duplicates. Okay, guys, so basically, like, when you start seeing duplicates, that's when I was, like, buying them brand new off the newsstand. I think I was buying multiple copies at times. I even was trying to sell them at one point, probably back in the late 80s at the flea market. Um, because that was my writing here. I was probably trying to sell off the later issues. Oh. King says, 
Hmm. These are interesting. Giant size number two. Another special edition of my entire comic collection. That was what I had kept. Ultraverse, huh? Malibu Comics? I don't know where those came from. All right, you guys. Well, I hope that was fun for you to go through that box. A little bit different type of unboxing. Definitely fun for me. I haven't been in there in a very, very, very long time. Uh, so it's kind of neat. I mean, some of the stuff I don't even remember where it came from. Uh, yeah. So that's interesting. Um, but it definitely came from somewhere because that's my personal stuff there. So um, I maybe have some more boxes similar to that in the locker too. We won't go through those. I really just want to get those comics out so we can include it in the auction tonight. Thought we'd have a little bit of fun too. But how funny that it ties in with the flea market. I got the cash box, aprons, and the old pictures from the flea market. I'll tell you, flea market is definitely part of my upbringing. I spent my week, every week in there from when I was 10 years old to when I was 18. And uh, it's in my blood. It's maybe in my DNA. Well, no, it's not because I am passing that on to my kids. They could care less, but I do love the flea market. And it's funny how life takes you full circle because here I am back at the flea market. Well, not right the second, but uh, it's part of my, my routine these past couple of years. So um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. I was happy to share it with you. If you did like it, hit me the thumbs up. We'll get back to the regular uh, unboxing videos here. Um, I'm not out of stuff. All right, I'm not trying to stretch videos here and show you my personal stuff. I'm not out of stuff. We got so much stuff and we'll get to that very, very soon. Here. We'll get back to that very, very soon. Tonight we have the auction. It ought to be passed by the time you see this, but that means tomorrow I'll be packing up and shipping. And the next day, boom, I'm at the unit. We're going to go through some stuff and I'm going to share the adventure with you guys. All right, thanks so much for watching. We'll have that video out very soon. Oh, and don't forget, we just launched memberships. So if you want to support us and the channel beyond just watching and liking and subscribing, uh, join a membership it starts at 99 cents per month if you want more info hit the join button down there next to the subscribe button but no obligation you guys our video is going to remain free to watch we'll have a little bit of extra benefits and things for members but just to have a little bit more fun but all the rest of it's going to be free to everybody just as it's always been we would never change that all right like i said the next video will be out soon until then good luck to you god bless you we'll see you next time here on locker nuts